Hey guys, it's Dina, and today I'm making ban kan tem gul with the addition of lobster. If you enjoy cooking with me and seeing all my recipes, don't forget to hit that like button below. Click the share button and share this with your friends and family. Subscribe to my channel to show your support and hit that notification bell so that you get alerts on new videos. And don't forget to tag me on Instagram at lifestyles underscore with underscore Dina when you recreate my dishes. This is another one of my favorite noodle soups to eat. The noodles are handmade and made from rice and tapioca flours. The deliciously savory broth is made from pork bones and crab paste. It's another beautiful seafood and pork combination where you can add shrimp, crab, and lobster. Growing up, my mom always made it with pork and crab meatball along with fish cake patties that were fried in oil. I actually didn't grow up with this orangey thick version. My mom always made a clear pork broth. It wasn't until I was in my mid 20s when I got a taste of this at a Vietnamese restaurant in San Francisco, located in the Tenderloin neighborhood. After a night of clubbing for my bachelorette party, I remember the flavors being so rich and the broth being so gorgeously thick. So today, I am presenting to you my version of this savory thick slurry soup with handmade tapioca and rice udon noodles. I love using baby back ribs to make my pork bone broth. It is easy, lots of bone quantity to make the broth rich and delicious, and there's a lot of meat on it to serve along with the soup. In order to use any bone to create a beautiful broth, you've got to pre-boil them to clean them off of debris and blood. First thing you'll need is to add the bones to a nice large pot, add in two teaspoons of salt, fill with water, and then simmer for 10 to 15 minutes to clean them. After simmering, remove them from the heat and rinse them thoroughly, rubbing them on all sides under running water. It's time to get our broth started. Set your Instant Pot to saute mode. Add four tablespoons of olive oil or vegetable oil. Next, we'll be adding some nice fragrances to our soup. Add a two inch piece of ginger that's been sliced in half. For some color and smokiness, we'll add one tablespoon of sweet paprika. The Instant Pot should be warming up now, so make sure to stir around the paprika and ginger so that you don't burn the paprika. Fill the pot with water up to the halfway mark. To balance out the salty and savory flavors, we will add a stick of palm sugar. Then we'll need two tablespoons of salt and a quarter cup of crab paste. I'm using the one from the glass jar. If you're using a six quart instant pot, I also have a recipe for that on my website. To add savoriness and a depth of flavor, add half a cup of chicken bouillon. You can substitute with mushroom bouillon or fish sauce. And that's it for the seasoning. It's time to add the pork ribs into the pot. We're almost ready to let the Instant Pot work its magic. Fill the pot up to the maximum line. Cancel the saute mode. With the vent open, secure the lid. Once the lid is secure, close the vent. Set the Instant Pot to soup broth mode. And then set the timer for 30 minutes. Once the broth is done, we'll be doing a quick release. It's time to prepare our seafood. In a pot, add two teaspoons of salt. We're going to blanch the shrimp, lobster, and crab at room temperature water on medium-high heat. It's very easy to overcook seafood. My method is to always cook it and bring it up to temperature at the same time as the water in order to not overcook them. No one likes overcooked seafood. Then I use an ice bath to stop the cooking. Keep an eye on the seafood. They cook really fast, stir occasionally, and as soon as they turn to an orangey kind of color that's not translucent anymore, and they curl up, they are ready to be removed. Turn off the heat and remove them immediately and place them into an ice bath to stop the cooking. Mm -hmm. 
our broth is done we're gonna do a quick release I just love this part because the fragrance that comes out of the pot is amazing look at that beautiful color cover the pot and keep the soup warm the soup pot has some nice coloring that's created from the sweet paprika but we're gonna add a little more by using annatto seeds it aids the coloring in a lot of Vietnamese dishes we'll need two tablespoons of annatto seed Add half a cup of olive oil or vegetable oil to the saucepan. Set the heat onto low. Steep until a deep orange color forms. Keep an eye on the natto oil. The natto seed can burn very quickly, so make sure to pay attention to it. When the color is deepened, turn off the heat and remove the seed. Add more water to the instant pot until it reaches one inch below the lip. Then add the natto seed oil. The broth is almost done. One more step. Set the instant pot to saute mode. We're going to create a slurry to thicken the broth. You'll need 3 quarter cups of tapioca starch. Add in half a cup of room temperature water. Mix until smooth. Add in the starch while stirring the broth at the same time. This will prevent the starch from clumping up into chunks. The starch will then thicken the broth over time as it expands. Turn off the saute mode. The broth is so creamy and silky now, and it will continue to thicken as it sits. Cover and keep warm. The broth will continue to develop flavor as it sits while we make our noodles. My favorite thing about this soup is the noodles, how they absorb the flavor from the broth and become this chewy deliciousness. To make the noodles, you need one bag of rice flour, which equals to two cups, two bags of tapioca starch, which equals to 4.5 cups. To reduce the flour taste, we're going to add 2 teaspoons of sugar and 2 teaspoons of salt. Using a whisk, mix all the ingredients together so that they are evenly distributed. It can be a little tricky to make this dough. We have to use hot boiling water. Start with 4 cups. Add to the center and mix at the same time. The flour will turn slightly translucent. The hot water actually cooks this flour to make it a bindable dough. If you don't use hot boiling water, the dough will not bind together. To create a workable dough that's elastic -y. Add more hot water as you work the dough, a little bit at a time since different brands of flour absorbs varying amounts of water. Although I have experimented with different amounts of water, I found that five and a half cups seems to be the magic number. I still don't add all the water in at once, just in case the dough does not need it. Let the dough cool down a bit before kneading. It is very hot. And if the dough doesn't seem to be coming together because it's too dry, add a little bit of that hot water. Approximately a quarter of a cup of hot boiling water at a time. It is very convenient and useful to have a hot water kettle while making the dough. When the dough starts to come together, do not add any more water. We don't want it to be sticky. As I'm working this dough, I'm actually working up a sweat. It takes a lot of strength. So my dad actually needs the dough for my mom when she makes ban kan. Once the dough is smooth and the bowl is clean, cover the dough with some plastic wrap and let it rest for 30 minutes. Make sure that it is airtight. While you work to make the noodles, be sure to keep the dough covered so that it does not dry out. Cut out a baseball size piece of dough. Use extra tapioca starch to dust in between the noodle strands to prevent sticking. Roll that piece out until it's about 4.5 to 5 inches wide and about 7 to 9 inches long. The dough should be about a quarter inch thick and 
The cut should be about an eighth of an inch between each strand or vice versa. Remember to dust each strand with tapioca starch to prevent them from sticking to one another. The noodles can be eaten immediately or stored in the fridge up to one week, or packed in individual portion and frozen up to three months. Defrost in the fridge the night before, and then cook them in hot boiling water. The noodle strands should be nice and malleable. They should not break when you bend and fold them. If your noodle strands break or crack, it is because the water was not hot enough when you first formed the dough. To cook the noodles, you'll need hot boiling water and one teaspoon of salt. Add the noodles to the hot boiling water. Give them a stir to prevent them from sticking together. Allow them to come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, let the noodles cook for another one to two minutes. Then they are ready to be served with that beautiful golden broth. It's that time again, my favorite part, the plating. Add the seafood to the top of the noodles, arrange it however you want. Add the pork ribs, and if serving quail eggs, warm them up in the instant pot before serving. Garnish with cilantro, scallions, fried shallots, and garlic. If you choose to make the version with the pork and crab meatball along with the fish cakes, just cook the meatballs. When the broth is done, bring it to a boil and add the meatballs. And once they float, they are cooked. Thank you so much for spending your precious time with me today. I hope that you continue to practice to become the master chefs in your own home. Don't forget to leave me a comment below and let me know if there's anything you want me to make. Tag me on Instagram at lifestyles underscore with underscore Dina when you use my recipes. I really enjoy seeing your successes. Thank you for supporting me through my journey of cooking. Subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you get alerts on new videos. Written recipes are available on my website at dinatai.com. Until next time, my friends, goodbye.